It was pretty, it was pretty simple, honestly. I don't know that there's some elaborate breakdown, you know, that we have. I just think he, as we looked at the whole body of work, thought that he was just slightly ahead of Austin, and uh, so it was a, a very close one. Uh, like I told you guys the other day, it was very close. Stayed that way, one of the closest that I've been involved with. They both did a tremendous job. At the end of the day, you know, only one can do it, and. Uh, We'll need them both to be successful this year, we know. And uh, so, but Kyler's uh, going to be the guy right now. Lincoln, what changed or what, how did it evolve since Monday? Just a couple more practices, honestly. Uh, they, we put the same amount of weight or importance on, on each and every day. Um, so I don't know that we learned just something earth shattering here in the last two days. I think, again, it was uh, getting a chance to see these guys in a little bit more of a prep mode. Uh, getting to see them against the scout team, working uh, against some of the, you know, our upcoming opponents. Um, so getting to see them a little bit in a different light, and then just gave us a little bit more to, to look back on and, and make our decision on. How did Austin take the news? Uh, like uh, any competitor, you would expect, uh, handled it, you know, very in a very mature way. Uh, certainly, is disappointed, wants to play. Uh, you know, for a guy like him, you can't sit there and say, well, what I did here over the last you know, several months didn't work. You know, what he did over the last several months did work. He's a much, much improved player. It's going to help him a lot going forward. And uh, he's got to continue to bring the same mindset and attitude uh, that he did throughout this entire competition. Because regardless of anybody else, he has improved dramatically. And uh, so, and he started it off today. He came out there on, you know, what we all know is a difficult day for him and, and had a heck of a practice. How much do you think uh, his improvement helped Kyler along? I don't know. I mean, the the competition always always helps. They they probably helped each other. Uh, you know, when you got two guys that are playing at a high level, you know, nobody they both understand somebody's not going to win this by default. You know, it's sometimes you have only one good player, and it's you know it's pretty obvious. And and uh, regardless of what you say, it's it's clear to everybody you know who it is, and that this guy's just a whole lot better. And that wasn't the case here. So. They made each other better. Uh, they fed off of each other. When one of them would raise their game, the other one would answer back. And, and uh, they both played at a high level. So it's made them better individually, and it certainly made this team better. Like, how, is, how, how is this talk with Austin different compared to last year when you told him he was going to redshirt? It's a different you know, competition <laughs> to be the start guy. is just different. You know, it was a different feel to it. He's in a lot different place than he was. You know, He was just coming off a... Uh, you know, if this first year backing up Baker and still trying to figure it all out, that, that had been a little bit of a, a whirlwind for him, as we can all imagine. And uh, so in, in last year for his development, you know, it made a lot of sense. Uh, this year was different because he, his approach was better. He's a much better player. He's more, he's more invested, more, uh, more in tune with what we're doing. I mean, he, and he played at a high level. So uh, it was, uh, this one's this one's always hard, no doubt. When both guys are playing at a high level, and uh, but that's part of it. He gets it. We all get it, and uh, he's going to have an important role going forward for this team. We're going to need him, and uh, I think he'll be ready to respond when that time comes. Kyle what time says you? that he's uh, he, he's been playing the best that he's ever played. Can you kind of put that in perspective? What you've seen different from him when you first arrived to, to now? He's certainly grown a lot. You know, I think maturity-wise, he's grown a lot uh, in every sense of it. I feel. I feel like the last two years were really good for him. You know, he came in, you know, came into A and M, you know, so Harold did so much hype behind it, uh, and then to be able to come here, you know, kind of catch his breath, you know, you know, learn from this program, the culture in this program, from the people in it, uh, to have different roles from going to being a scout team guy, and then being a backup last year. Those were roles that he's never had to have in his life. Um, so that was all good for him. I think to understand the whole process, what it really takes to be great. And uh, so he's got a lot better. He's got a long ways to go. You know, this is just a just a starting point here. But, you know, obviously I'm excited about his progress. Can you take, us, take us through what that conversation was like. I, I got them both in this morning, late to mid-morning, and told them. Um, that was pretty simple, you know, just told them. I don't I think it's situations like that that guys, whether it's good news for them or bad news, I mean, these these are you know elite athletes, they're competitors. They don't want you to to beat around the bush. You know, they want you to just tell them straight, and that's what I did. And uh, so told them both what the situation was, what the expectations were going forward, um, what we based the decision on, and then uh, 
didn't spend too much on you know camp and the decision all that it was more all right that's all well and good now now what do you need to do going forward so that was you know my approach uh, with both of them like that's sort of touching on that you talked last week about your last big quarterback battle at east carolina and the way that that shook out those first couple games how do you keep kyler sharp and improving and uh, austin engaged and ready if uh, he's needed well that's where the competition comes back because you know they know that you know we both we have two good players in there and they know the expectation of of just within this offense the expectations we have as far as the quarterback's performance and our offense's performance so they realize that they realize that this is you know this right now is uh for the what the next 10 days and then the first snap against fau and then after that it's about you know you know who's playing the best who stays healthy all those different things that are going to determine who plays so this is uh as we keep the competition always going here, uh, the, no matter the position, no matter the time uh, of the year, that's that's just what we believe in in this program. And quarterbacks no different. You look you back you on the leadership. The, the the leadership. What's that? Do you think you might work Austin in from time to time, given the fact that the race was so close? Yeah, I'd love to be able to work him in. You know, so we got to see how how games go. You know, how the natural progression goes. But I'm I'm very comfortable. I could have just easily said. That he was going to be the quarterback and would have complete faith and confidence in, in his ability to lead us. Big part of these guys, whoever's going to get the job, they're going to be a new quarterback, hadn't played a lot. And a lot has made the last years about Baker's leadership with the team. Looking back, was that how much did coaching have to do with Baker and his leadership style? How much will it deal with Kyler and his style of leadership with the team? Well, it's, it's different. Their, their styles are different, uh, and everybody's styles are different. Uh, but the key is how somebody would lead last year's team and how somebody would lead this year's team are different. You know, the team dynamic is so different. And, you know, being a quarterback is, you know, you got to be what your team needs you to be in those moments. And part of it is knowing your team well enough to figure that out. And so uh, there's things that these guys both do well as leaders. There's things Kyler does very well as a leader. There's things he's got to grow on, just like all the young quarterbacks that we've had. But uh, I'm confident in his ability to lead our group and to do his job. And, He's got to do a great job, like all of our players, like uh, me as a head coach, of figuring out how this team needs to be led and what's the most effective way to do it. Lincoln, you know, he's so fast that it's, you know, when you talk about him, it's hard not to focus just on that speed, but he's showing you that he can really throw the ball. I mean, obviously he couldn't quarterback here if he didn't throw the ball. It seems like nationally a lot of people miss that, that he's been a pretty good throwing quarterback for you, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, you said it. I mean, they, you know, guy wouldn't be able to play here, nor would we recruit him here if we didn't think they were going to be a good enough thrower. I mean, it, it starts with that, and it starts with the ability to lead, and it starts with the ability to throw the football, and everything else is all well and good, but our guys are going to have to be able to do that. So he's going to get his chance. You know, people can say this or that, but he'll he'll get his chance to, to show what he can do. Again, Bob used to tell us in these competitions that uh, the guy who makes the fewest catastrophic mistakes is usually the one who wins the competition. That, does that stand for this as well? And uh, where do you where do you measure that? Uh, where do you assess that measure? Oh, it's it's absolutely a big factor. You know, just because you can't you can't win championships and you can't win big games. You know, making those huge mistakes and those are the ones in large part we've been able to avoid here for the last several years, and that'll be key going forward. It was certainly an important part of this competition, but it was not a, they were close enough in that respect that it was definitely not a differentiating factor. Well, moving forward, how do you kind of have to manage expectations? Because, I mean, you look at Baker's start, he was good against Akron, but it really took that second half of Tennessee before he kind of started becoming who he was as a quarterback in this offense. Do you, do you kind of have to manage, you know, any kind of frustrations you might have early on with Kyler? Well, you know, we're in a different time and place, but, but I do think it is important yeah, forever for all of us to keep in perspective. I you said the second half of Tennessee. I mean, it's really the second half of the fourth quarter in overtime, and then we had a couple games. I think we played Tulsa here, and he played pretty good. You know, didn't play well at Texas. I mean, really the first half of that season was just, you know, was just okay offensively, quarterback, all the above. Some great moments, some not great moments, and second half of that season is where he started to take off. But then again, he was also dealing with, you know, a brand new offense at the time, as were all those other offensive players. So. Our expectations are high. You know, we've got we've got good players around these guys. These guys are good players. Uh, you know, our expectations offensively, I would say, are right where they've been here for the last couple of years. Who have asked you about 
mistakes, Lincoln. And the last time anyone saw Kyler consistently a quarterback, he, he made he was still making them at, at A&M. Was that a case in, in his, at that stage of his career of a, of a supreme athlete still trying to figure out the position? I don't know. Last time everybody saw Baker before he played here, he made a bunch of them too. Right, and the, the growth was <laughs> obvious in, in his yeah. case. I take it you see the same uh, yeah. potential for a curve there. Sure. No, it's hard for it's hard for you know freshmen to play right. this position. No, no question about it. It's doable. Uh, you see some guys across the nation having some degrees of success. Most of them don't have the leeway or put as much on them, and I, you know that we do offensively. Uh, so, but yeah, I think I think you know Kyler's certainly grown. I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to what he did at A and M, other than when I you know looked at him before we brought him here. But I'm happy with his progress. I, I think he's quite a bit different than he was then. Did you notice Kyler carrying himself differently today, officially knowing that he's a guy? No, not really. I mean, he's, he's kind of his own guy, and they need to be. And I think, you know, he's he's worked hard to try to lead here um, and will continue to do so. But, no, I'm sure, you know, it probably felt a little different to everybody out there, you know, for the first day. But that's just a first-day thing, and tomorrow it will be back to business as usual. How's this going to help you as an offensive coordinator, having a, knowing who your quarterback is going to the opener now? Well, I, it, I, it helps, but also, you know, we're one snap away from, from in a lot of different situations of playing with the other guy. And then I think also, you know, I've luckily enough, I've had these guys here now for multiple years, you know, and so I, I, I feel like I've got a, you know, a good grasp on, you know, what they're comfortable with, what they do well, what they don't. Well, I'll continue to learn about them. We will as a staff, but uh, it's not like it's two new guys rolling in here. So um, I think we've we've got a pretty good grasp on what they what they can do well and how we can tailor it best to fit both of them. Along those lines, you, you talked about that tailoring to the quarterback. Now you have the player. How does that kind of make it easier for you now going into the season? Maybe open up the offense more than maybe you had it during fall camp at all. And, how does that uh, make you feel going forward? It makes me feel fine. I mean, somebody's got to play. You know, I, I I don't know opening up the offense. I mean, we, we've been pretty wide open here for the last few years. So we're going to try to keep scoring some points, try to do the best we can each and every week. I don't I don't know that we ever feel like, well, all of a sudden we're just opening it up. You know, it's just more of, you know, what do you have at a certain time? What's going to be the best? Uh, strategy and scheme to help us score points to try to win this game and whatever that is we do it. Lincoln, this game is such a quarterback driven game and, and it's difficult to win if your starting quarterback is injured. What's your fear factor right now, your fear level of letting him run, letting him be the athlete that he is? I don't, I don't, I don't coach with fear, you know, this is football, things happen, um, guys get nicked up, guys, I mean it's, it's just part of the game, you know, and you just, I think, that's why you recruit hard. That's why you have people behind them. Uh, because if you if you coach or play scared or, or with fear, then you know it's hard to be very successful. I think you also got to be smart. You know, Baker was a great example. It took him his first year. He took a lot of shots that were absolutely unnecessary, and uh, so that's something that you've got to grow from. And so there'll be maybe not that. There'll be different things that we're going to have to learn and grow from. That's that's part of the process. But you know, we're we're not going to. We're not going to let fear take control of us. There, we're going to we're going to be aggressive. That's always been our mindset. It's the first time you've had a running quarterback quite like this. Um, you have to temper your own expectations. That we're we're absolutely not going to give him the ball twenty times a game, or is six too many, or do you have a number in your head? I don't have a number in my head. You know, we're just again, we're just trying to coach to win. You know, and that's. Our, all of our players are on board with that. They understand that. That's just kind of the expectations when you walk in the door here. With Austin, uh, you mentioned, you've mentioned before that maybe the door isn't shut, that Kyler could come back, and you guys obviously have quarterbacks coming in all the time. What advice would you have to him staying engaged maybe over the next couple seasons that you know, he, this may not be his last quarterback battle? Oh, sure. Oh, it, it won't be. You know, It won't be. He's too good of a player. And so I think he just, again, he can't look at the, the results of today and say that what I've done over the last few months or through my career here has not has not worked. Uh, it has, and then specifically what he's done over the last four or five months through through this summer and in this fall camp, uh, his his rise has been as strong as anybody in our program. So if he continues to do that, great things are going to happen for that kid, no doubt about it. Two more. Kyler's a pretty stone-faced guy. He give you any kind of reaction at all when you gave him the news? Yeah, I mean, he's excited, but, I mean, they, you know, I think both those guys, regardless who I would have told the good news to, I think they both understand that the, the real work's ahead. And uh, 
this is just uh, part of the process. That's against where it goes back being good to having guys that have been through this program. They've played in games. They've backed up guys. They've seen. They've seen a lot. Now I know they've got to go do it, but you know they don't get too high or too low. And I think they they understand you know everything that's getting ready to come at them. I think they understand that it's going to be a long process and. You know, we're off to a good start, but we as a team and they as players have a long ways to go. Lincoln, now that you've named a starting quarterback, did you name a starting center to go on? <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. We're uh, not yet on that one. We, that one's a little bit easier to, to play out uh, just because of the nature of the position, a little bit easier to play out. So uh, still a great battle, but not ready yet. All right, thanks everybody.